Ottawa, with a total of 80 events, Ottawa's Chamberfest may or may not be the world's largest chamber music festival, but it is certainly the largest of its kind in Canada. This year's festivities, which concluded earlier this month, ranged from a concert by the Romani virtuoso violinist Roby Lacados and his quintet to a multimedia celebration of Francis Pegamagabo, the most decorated indigenous soldier in Canadian history, to a Baroque program by the Swiss early vocal and instrumental music ensemble GLI Andrew Geneve. Angela Hewitt performed Buck, and very beautifully at that, at Ottawa's Chamberfest's Andre Gagné variety. You bet. As artistic director Roman Boris explains, the two weeks of activity are built around six streams of concentration, early music, new music, the core chamber repertory, opera and music theater, fringe programming and community engagement activities such as free outdoor concerts. Some of those outdoor concerts took place on the grounds of Rideau Hall, no less, home of the Governor General. Other venues, almost all of them walking distance from each other, included the National Gallery, Dominion Chalmers, one of the grandest of Ottawa churches, and De La Salle High School, where the National Youth Orchestra under Jonathan Darlington offered a rare, highly convincing performance of Vaughan Williams' Third Symphony. A youth orchestra in a chamber music festival? Well, Ottawa may be playing fast and loose with its terminology, but the young musicians of this remarkable orchestra did also offer a program of chamber music at the National Gallery. Article continued Bella Witt is the sheer catholicity of programming that helps make Ottawa's music binge special. Over the span of a long weekend, I augmented my National Youth Orchestra adventures with a range of events stretching from pianist Angela Hewitt playing Buck, and very beautifully at that, the three back-to-back -back concerts of contemporary music hosted by composer Gary Kulisha. Now I don't want to minimize the pleasure of hearing Les Pastoro, Petite's Chanteur de Waterloo, a boys' choir from Belgium, singing for, or Andrew One, concertmaster of the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, playing Beethoven sonatas with pianist Charles Richard Hamelin. But it isn't often these days that the opportunity comes along to spend an afternoon sitting through concert after concert of the classical music of our time. Canadian composers such as Omar Daniel, Andrew Staniland and Scott Good appeared alongside such major international figures as Philip Glass, Peter S. Basques and Luciano Berrio, performed at a generally high level by such artists as the Madawaska String Quartet and the University of Toronto New Music Ensemble. The ensemble even played four movements from one of the seminal and most challenging works of the post-Second World War era, Lamarto Sands Maitre by Pierre Boulez. Kulisha, who conducted, told his audience that the music had last been performed in Canada in 1991 and will next be performed complete this coming season at the University of Toronto, surely a landmark achievement for student musicians. While it was inspirational to hear musicians at the beginning of their careers, it proved no less inspirational to hear one at the end of his, the octogenarian British Columbia bassoonist George Zuckerman, who appeared in conversation with Boris to reminisce about a career stretching back more than 60 years. As someone who grew up in British Columbia I owe you a good deal to Zuckerman, not only as a musician, he played the very opening notes of my first live performance of Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, in the presence of the composer, but as an impresario, whose overture concerts brought live music to small towns as well as large across the country. Boris offered his own thanks to Zuckerman for helping introduce the Griffin Trio to Canadians and the timing could hardly have been more appropriate, since this year's 25th anniversary Chamberfest coincided with the 25th anniversary of the trio Boris as cellist, founded together with violinist Annelie petit Patanacoon and pianist James Parker. Article continued below with the venerable bassoonist in the audience and broadcaster Eric Friesen as host, the Griffin Trio celebrated with what the program called a 25th anniversary mashup, made up of movements from the trio's repertoire and the premiere of London-based composer Paul Frenner's specially commissioned B-Town Waters. A silvery occasion, indeed. William Littler is a Toronto-based music writer and a freelance contributor for The Star.